The NVIDIA suffer its first true crack in its supposedly impenetrable armor. As you know, on this channel, I have been discussing this topic for months. To see it actually come true is absolutely astounding. So first of all, let's just go ahead, get right into the details here. We had this breaking news from yesterday. All of you can see the headline right here. However, this is not news if you have been watching my channel. You will know that for the past year, I have been emphasizing time and time again that Alphabet has the best AI chips. They simply do. They have no competition. And the simple fact is, is that when we talk about NVIDIA, NVIDIA has the best consumer-facing chips, i.e., Alphabet does not sell their chips. And in fact, they've been very limited because they use so much for their internal workload. Okay, so right now their Ironwood TPUs just now became generally available, i.e. you and I can go out and rent them. It tells you multiple things, right? The first thing you gotta understand is why is a company like in Google not using NVIDIA's chips? And NVIDIA will say, we sell our chips to Google. And of course, because Google's a good partner, they'll say, yeah, we use, we use NVIDIA's chips. But what they're leaving out there is that they use them in their cloud to sell to other people i.e. Google says, hey, you can rent NVIDIA's uh, GPUs from us. But when it comes to their own internal load, it's been well documented they don't use any of NVIDIA's hardware. Simply put, one, they don't want to pay the 70% Jensen Wong tax, okay? NVIDIA has 70% margins. Can you imagine paying 70 cents on every dollar? Two, their chips are better. They get better performance per watt, which means they get better performance per dollar, okay? Their chips are what you would call a specialized version of ASIC chips, okay? That's application-specific integrated circles, circuits. Now, NVIDIA has what are called GPUs, and it's kind of funny because hearing Jensen defend himself against this, he actually sounds like a CEO from Intel back in the day. Jensen could come along and say, hey guys, for graphics and for matrix uh, multiplication and for AI, our chips are better than Intel's because they don't have all this overhead where they have to do all this general stuff, right? And so that was NVIDIA's argument where they were like, hey, our chips are better because they do this one thing and they do it very well. But then Google comes along and they're like, no, we have something extremely specific. We literally just have a tensor flow on all the data through the matrices and it's like a heartbeat. They actually have a, a name for it. It's like a very different type of architecture, okay? And because of this, because it's specifically made for inferencing, understand that their chips are broken up for training, for inferencing. They don't have a their they don't use their inferencing chip for training. They don't use their training chip for inferencing. It's just one chip for each thing, and that's all they do. And because that's all they do, they do it extremely well. And so now you have Jensen coming out and say, hey, our chips can do more. Well, what does he mean by that? Well, Google's models, Gemini stuff, were trained specifically on these chips. It would be, if you were to bring your model over, you would have to do a lot of work to get it to run on these chips because it's just a different type of architecture. So Jensen's looking at that and he's like, hey, this is a bonus for us. And it is to an extent, right? But what he's forgetting is that these big tech guys like OpenAI, like Meta, they can go in and they can work with this type of model, i.e. they have the applications, they have the programmers, they have the money and the power to go and deliver on Google's hardware. Okay, so where Jensen's CUDA is a very big deal to some people in some markets, when you come to these MAG7 companies that have unlimited resources for development, right, and where electricity is actually the biggest barrier to them, they need the most efficient chip possible and they're not gonna get vendor locked in by anything. All they want is compute to watt. That's all they want is pure performance. And that is Google's chips, okay? Google has the best chips. And so we'll go ahead and read this article real quick, but I enjoy reading this because Jensen's acting like the CEO of like Intel, right? 
NVIDIA responded in a statement on Tuesday saying it's a generation ahead of the industry. Well, that's not true. NVIDIA has, but they're very careful with these statements. I'll tell you why. NVIDIA has more than 90% of the market for AI chips with its graphic processors, analysts say. But Google's in-house chips have gotten increased attention in recent weeks as a viable alternative. So it came out at Google's last earnings call that Google was discussing that possibly in 2027, they may open up their chips to other people. Okay, and remember that on here at the time I covered this and I said, if Google does this, right, I, I, I said I didn't expect them to do it because one, selling chips is very difficult. Okay, you got to understand that you just don't become a chip manufacturer overnight. And two, you do have to have some type of ecosystem or you have to at least support the chip. And Google has not traditionally been good at that. They've been getting better at that now with their cloud, but it's been an area where they've been lacking. That's why uh, Amazon AWS and Microsoft with their Azure were able to leapfrog Google in the early years. Google just had too many experimental things going on in the cloud and they had to fix that. And they have righted that ship, uh, ship, but I didn't know that they'd be able to do that with their chips. Well, now it sounds like they are committing to that. They're saying, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to work on our tools for this. We're going to make our tools more developer friendly. We're going to start building out an ecosystem, right? And when they're doing this, they're doing it the right way. They're not saying we're going to sell chips to everyone. They're just looking at like a Facebook. And my guess is they'll be looking to, to open AI and they're going to say, hey, for you guys, you know, who are going to buy billions of dollars of these chips and who we know we can just supply you easy because you can take care of your own data centers and you have developers that can work with what we got. You are our perfect customer. OK, so that's where I look at that. It's just being absolutely brilliant. Um, we're delighted by Google's success. They've made great advances in AI and we continue to supply Google. They do. They supply Google's cloud. NVIDIA said in a post on X, NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry. It's the only platform that runs every AI model and does it everywhere computing is done. So this is why he's saying they're a generation ahead. They're not a generation ahead in performance. He's saying again that they're more general, that they can do more. And he's actually right with this, right? Every AI model out there, including Gemini, Gemini has been tweaked so it can also run on NVIDIA's hardware. When it comes to performance, Google's Ironwood is vastly superior, okay? The post came after Nvidia saw shares fall 3% on Tuesday after report that Meta, one of his key customers, could strike a deal with Google to use his tensor processing units for his data centers. And that deal was a big deal. I believe it was an order of tens of billions of dollars. Oh, sorry, I don't have my log in there. Uh, tens of billions of dollars. Mind you that Google has, or, or Meta has already committed to pent tens of billions of dollars for Google's TPUs and the data center after OpenAI Sam Altman went to Google and was begging for tens of billions of dollars worth of their TPUs in June. And this is interesting. I'm gonna tell you why this is so interesting on so many levels, because actually I'm gonna bring this around to Michael Burry again. Like NVIDIA, Google doesn't sell its TPU chips to other companies, but it uses them for internal tasks and allows companies to rent them through the Google Cloud. They have just opened it up. Uh, earlier this month, Google released Gemini 3, a well-reviewed well state-of-the-art AI model that was trained on the company's TPUs, not NVIDIA GPUs. Okay, so this is where the mainstream, lamestream media needs to catch up. They have been training all their models for the past few years on their own internal hardware. They have not been using anything from NVIDIA. They have moved all of their internal workload off of external stuff onto their own GPUs, TPUs, and ASIC chips. We are experiencing accelerating demand for both our custom TPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, a Google spokesperson said in a statement. We're committing to supporting both as we have for years. So right here, what are they talking about? They're talking about the cloud. So when Google had this kind of news drops, Google doesn't want NVIDIA to feel threatened. Google rents out NVIDIA uh, GPUs in the cloud, and I'm sure they make a healthy margin on that. Uh, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong addressed rising TPU competition at an earnings call earlier this month, noting that Google was a customer for a company, GPU chips, and that Gemini can run on NVIDIA technology. So earlier this month, it was reported that not only does Google has its TPUs, but Microsoft and Amazon are releasing their TPUs, right? And this is what I, I've been telling you guys this for months. I have been telling you this for months that the that the threat to Nvidia isn't just Huawei in China, okay? Which America is so moronic for locking us out of, okay? <laughs> you know, for pissing off the Chinese and getting us kicked out of there. It's not just from Huawei. It's from here in the states. 
and not from who you think it is. Google is the biggest competitor, right? And now Amazon saying, look at the success Google's having, right? How is Google able to do what they're doing? How are they able to serve up this model and be so profitable? Only because of their own TPUs, right? And so when Jensen was answering this, right, he has to give the best answer. And so he's like, well, yeah, Google still buys our chips. What he's not telling you is that they buy them for their cloud to rent them out to other people, okay? He also mentioned that he was in touch with Dennis Hassabis, the CEO of Google DeepMind. Wong said that Hassabis texted him to say that the tech industry theory that using more chips and data will increase more powerful AI models, often called scaling laws by AI developers, is intact. NVIDIA says that scaling laws will lead to even more demand for the company's chips and systems. So what's Jensen saying here? He's saying that Hassabis is telling him that, hey, Jensen, there's enough demand to go around. Now, we're going to circle back to that. We're going to circle back to that because this is something where I've been telling you about the AI bubble, but now I might believe uh, in Michael Michael Burry's uh, uh, thesis a little bit more now, okay? So here we have it. NVIDIA is threatened by Google, okay? From their TPUs, Google is actually in discussions to deliver tens of billions of dollars worth of TPUs to Facebook, to Meta. Now, who is that going to come off of? That is going to take right off of NVIDIA's NVIDIA's profits, okay? Their 70% profit margin is going to get hit by that. And what if OpenAI is next? We already know OpenAI got, uh, I believe it was $10 billion a year of run off of Google's cloud for their TPUs. But what if they start buying hardware too, okay? What if all these other people start coming? What if Google, they're not going to ever catch up to CUDA and the completeness of the ecosystem? But what if they can make it just enough that they can start being viable for very large companies in this space, right? They are a real threat. They are an extremely real threat to NVIDIA, NVIDIA's dominance. And now remember, NVIDIA must maintain those huge profit margins, 70%. Just imagine that those profit market margins get slashed in half. What happens? Revenues get slashed in half. Right now, they are enjoying a 70% tax on every single chip sold. That is absolutely insane. Okay, and so now to tie this back to Michael Burry. Now to tie this back to Michael Burry. Michael Burry, he based his thesis on the fact that he believes that there's going to be an oversupply of chips. And I, I said, you know, earlier when I was talking about Burry, I said, unless he has a crystal ball of some sort, which I didn't say he didn't have, right? I mean... He knows, obviously, he has better connections than I do, right? But I said, unless you really know that there's going to be this glut coming onto the market of chips where all of a sudden TSMC and all these chip suppliers can keep up with the demand, you know, it's hard to really say where we're going with that. But this actually, le- this kind of, I think this gives credence to Burry's thesis because how is Google going to be able to run capacity for all these chips. Understand that Google has been compute constrained their self. At their last earnings call, they announced that they're like, I think they said that they have like $100 billion of backlog and, and cloud contracts, and they actually have to turn them off, you know, turn them away now because the backlog is so, so big, right? And so that's where some of these people are going to Oracle now because it's like, oh, okay, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, their backlog is so big, we got to go over to Oracle. But that's what Google's stating. And so, and then of course, they're stating how they, you know, they need more of this demand for their own internal services, for their own internal build out. But now all of a sudden, 2027, they're looking at it and they're saying, we will have enough chips that not only supply ourselves, but tens of billions of dollars externally. That is is very interesting. That to me is very, very interesting. Because remember what I said that if if the AI bubble burst, who are going to be the people that survive it? Okay. Alphabet is not only going to survive, they're going to thrive. I saw Sundar Pichai on his interview where he was talking about the bubble. And he just, he actually, I thought he had a little grin on his face. Because if a bubble, you know, if you believe there's an AI bubble and it burst, who does it benefit more than Alphabet, right? Especially if it burst hard. So right now, I do think that Sam Altman and OpenAI would survive because they are so deeply funded. 
Yes, he's burning cash like crazy, but they are so deeply funded right now. So many people have so much money in there that if the bubble bursts, I don't think it's going to take down OpenAI. Yes, they won't be able to uh, uh, realize their commitments to oracles and things like that. It'll have a tremendous effect, but I don't think they're going away. Okay. But if it bursts super hard and they go away, I mean, Alphabet is in a duopoly right now with OpenAI. Your biggest competitor basically disappears. Their models go over to Microsoft, who won't be able to have the, you know, the cachet that that Sam Altman does. What else better could you ask for? And just the simple fact that Google has the better models right now. They have the best models out there. And this is why I was saying in that video, right, where this federal regulation, okay, I'm not here telling you, oh, all big government's bad. Right, we know there are models where, where government centralized government uh, uh, policies like this are very successful. In China, they are, but I don't think they're successful in America because our federal go government is so corrupt. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that, but it's just simply the case. There's so much waste. There's so much pork. There's so much one hand greasing the other hand. Okay, and I love my country, but when you come here, you know, if you live here and you look at our government, can you not say that there's just so much corruption and so much waste of money? So when they set up a centralized federal standard like this, right, and you think, yeah, this will help make things easier, guess who it always helps make it easier for in the past? The big guy. We've heard that time and time again, it has been made crystal clear in technology. Every time they're like, we're gonna level the playing field, Guess who gets stronger? The big companies, right? And so you might think, yeah, but 50 different laws in 50 different states. Yeah, I know it's going to be messy. I know. But that's the only way that you allow some crazy innovative idea to come out of left field to dethrone one of these companies. That's the only way it's going to happen right now. Because another guy in the comments, he made a real good comment. He's like, right now, just load up on the big four, you know? Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Apple, just load them up, you know, and, and let them do what they can because this is like, you know, and part of me is like, yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe at this point you're like, it's not possible for a small lab, you know, and just to be clear in this channel, when I say startup, I don't really look at open AI as a startup. I know technically they count at it, but when you have a trillion dollar valuation, when you're in a Thropic and you're, you know, having funding rounds at 200 billion, I think that, you know, startup is a very kind of a misleading term for those companies, right? I know that they're technically in that phase, but yeah, so that's what I got for you today. A lot of crazy stuff going on. I mean, could this, you know, imagine that NVIDIA, which has been fueling the market, right? Imagine that they start getting a couple chinks here and there, you know, and if the market does suffer, Alphabet is going to dominate. They are literally going to dominate. And if we make federal regulations <laughs> where it makes it harder for anyone else small to compete, right? It's just paving the way for them to go forward. So I don't know, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you agree, do you disagree? Is Nvidia gonna hang on, you know, and be the juggernaut that still commands 70% profit margins? Or is Alphabet gonna be able to chip away at that? Have a great day. Oh, be sure to like and subscribe.